this professor used to work for uh, as the director of photography for uh, Jet Li. But we're very lucky to have a very interesting and a very, uh, very unique uh, number of uh, professors with us and offering just education in China. That's the entrance of the Beijing Center. Uh, but I told I would uh, talk more about how we do this. Uh, the fact that we are, I study China, and China means that we want our students to uh, understand the country, not only the language, not only the culture, and not only traveling about China. Many times the students, uh, you know, is better than myself, some students that go abroad would be more interested in the fun than in the, in the classwork. So uh, some students uh, wanted to call us the B Center uh, because they complain about the grades they have, especially after the midterms. And we say, well, we, we evaluate you as, as you should. And if you don't do your work, you won't get an easy, get an easy A. Uh, the Chinese language requirements are essential, but they can choose between intensive Chinese or regular Chinese. Uh, and, but the regular Chinese means three times a week, two and a half hours plus one hour with a private tutor in the afternoon, so it's already very much intensive. Uh, and the traveling uh, includes a very serious uh, research part. So each student has a theme that is normally related to his area of interest, and uh, he has to study this before they go on the road. When we arrive at certain sites, for example, we're starting a trip on the Silk Road now, in the second half of, of August. If we arrive in Jaiwan, uh, and we have to talk about uh, borders, and the student has one of these themes, we give him 10 or 15 minutes, he does his presentation, and then we have time for questions. After the trip, we have, uh, he has to write a paper. Uh, this is not uh, necessarily a for credit, uh, but it's a mandatory academic activity for all the students who come with us because we want them to engage with China in a different way. Experience and reflect China. So we study China, uh, and this is an example of the courses we offer from uh, Chinese language, communication, science, fine arts, uh, business, uh, social science, history. Uh, martial arts, philosophy, theology, internships, uh, literature, political science. Uh, and in China, let's say, multiple levels of immersion. So contact with Chinese people. Each student uh, has uh, one uh, language tutor. That's our lab. Instead of having a computer for each student and having them talk to a machine, we want them to talk with a person. So each student has a different designated uh, language tutor with whom they have to be one hour a day, three times a week if they are uh, in regular Chinese, four times a week if they are in intensive Chinese. Uh, we want, besides that, each student has also a host student with whom they have to interact. And if they want more, they can also have a Chinese roommate. Remember, that was the sensitive topic with the with the King University. At URB, we can offer that. We can even offer uh, a homestay. So we have a number of families with whom we do homestays. We want them to become explorers. So I said on the prayers, so each student has a theme and we have to research and write. And also the TV's collection of books and artifacts. Through our library and through our collection of artifacts, we want the students to have direct contact. If we go to a museum, and you see uh, a 5,000 years uh, pot behind the glass, you can be very much impressed. But if this pot is sitting in front of you without anything in between, the impact's much stronger. So we decided to take the risk of endangering those pieces of art that the students uh, on the art class who come to the office and learn and touch uh, Chinese history. A student uh, studying, uh, for example, Tibet has an area in the office where they have access to Tibetan art crafts. Uh, it's an example of how we want to the students to be integrated with China. And here I have a photo of 
pictures uh, of the pandas we can just see the wildlife. Now, before entering Hawaii, China, and just share a few numbers, how was it possible? QBC is unique uh, in its situation because we are a center uh, that provides uh, mainly study abroad opportunities, but a center that belongs to itself. As I said, it was established by the Chinese province together with uh, the Association of Jesuit Universities, College and Universities, uh, but it was set as an independent institution. We are a non-for-profit corporation registered in the state of Illinois. Since we don't grant degrees, we have a partnership with Loyola Chicago that allows us to issue the press script for the courses we offer through them. So the courses are uh, recognized through Loyola Chicago as a service to all other Jesuit schools. But we also have another agreement with our Jesuit, our, our partner, Chinese University, that allows us to live in China and to give uh, the visas to our students. So we probably don't have, we borrow students, we borrow faculty, and we don't grant degree. So we exist as a higher education institution, but we, we don't do much, uh, we don't do anything by ourselves. This particular situation allows us a lot of flexibility, and we try to take advantage uh, as much as we can. So we, we are working with many universities around the world, Mainly uh, in the U.S., I used to define TBC as an American international program. Maybe 90 or 85 percent of our students come from the U.S., but we have also students coming from Vesale, Barcelona. We have students coming from Javeriana, Cali, Javeriana, Bogota, uh, Ateneo de Manila, uh, many other universities worldwide. And we have especially one division uh, called China Contact that designs tailor-made programs to help educate all China. This year we have 23 groups from six different countries. Uh, and we want to see to be a real service for the Jesuit schools that are interested in providing education all China. Why? Well, uh, just a reminder, it's third or biggest GDP. The data is from 2008. 